Here I'm going to run you through how you can run some sensitivity analysis on changes that you might want to make to your sales margins. So we can calculate our gross, uh, our gross revenue margins, for example, based on you know what our what, what we achieve from our total sales uh, from our total costs. But then we might want to try and see what happens when we expand or contract that, and see what that does to our total profit. Because if we expand uh, gross. Uh, gross revenue margins, we actually expand gross profit margins uh, more. So let's run through uh, uh, how we can set this up, how we can do this analysis in Power BI. So first thing, just to quickly go over here, is we've got our data model, pretty simple data model. We've got dates, products, regions, customers, and they're all connected to a sales table. Okay, so we've got to create our first measure here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this into a measure table. And I'm just going to call this key measures. We'll run through some of this, a lot of these techniques uh, relatively quickly, but uh, obviously the great thing about video is you can uh, you can stop and rewind or pause. Uh, and also this uh, this is going to be made available to everyone on the uh, Enterprise DNA training portal. So you'll be able to actually see all the formula that go into this and, and, and see how, how it's all set been set up. Okay, so I've got to first of all create my first measure, total sales. And this is just my simple core measure, which is I'm just going to sum the total revenue column because we've, we've already got that column in our data. And I'm just going to finally make this a measure table. Okay, cool. So now when we look at our products, we can then put a total sales next to it and get the total sales for that product. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to work out what is our gross revenue uh, margin. So obviously we've got to work out total, what total cost is, so that so we need to create that measure. I'm going to go total costs. I'm going to use some x here uh, of sales, and then we've got to go total unit cost times the quantity. Okay, so now we've got total costs, and now we can work out what what's our margin. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to call it. Gross, profit, uh, gross revenue margin. And then all I've got to do here is go divide the total sales minus the total costs and divide it by the total sales. Okay, so now we can actually get a percentage out of this and see well, what is our gross revenue margin. And obviously we want to format these things as we go along, especially over the percentages. Okay, cool. So now we've got our gross revenue margin for every single product from higher, and I've just sorted it from highest to lowest. Now, what I want to do here, I actually want to shock this this margin. I want to increase it by say two percent, five percent, eight percent, ten percent, and then I want to see the flow-on effects that has to our profit margins. Okay, so there's a bit to this, but let's go through it. So first of all, we've got to create a uh, a supporting table, a parameter table, which can hold or enables us to uh, harvest the um, the margin change. So I'm going to call this margin changes, and I'm going to call um, uh, margin adjustments, and then I'm just going to go minus five percent plus two percent plus five percent plus eight percent and plus ten percent. Okay, so we've created that supporting table. I'm going to load it in. And as, if you've seen a number of uh, the videos from Enterprise DNA, you would have seen this technique used over and over again because it's such an awesome technique. But what we want to do is we want to turn this into a slicer and make this a list. And we want to, we want to, just give me one second whilst I turn this into a percent as well. What we want to do here is we want to be able to select one of these and then see that impact in our gross revenue margin. So what we've got to do is actually build that logic in here. So I'm going to create another measure and I'm going to call this uh, margin uh, margin change or we'll call it yep, margin, margin change. And we will use this logic. If has one value, margin adjustment, then equal to that value, and then we use the values function for that. And if not, we'll make it equal to 0%. So if nothing is selected in here, that, that's going to equal to 0%. So now if I drag this margin change into the table, 
might actually change this into the full name here. You'll see that this is now reflecting our selection. So what we've got here is 5%, if I select 8%, 10%, so on and so forth. Okay, so now we can uh, look at our scenario gross revenue margin. So all we've got to do is go scenario gross revenue margin. And it's as simple as gross revenue margin plus the margin change. Okay, and then we drag that back in to our, uh, into our table. And then I'm just going to change that to a percent again as well. Actually, we could probably have one decimal point on that. Cool. Okay. So now we have the, so the scenario gross revenue margin for the change, I guess the, the shock that we've added to it. So as you can see here, this, this changes for every selection that I'm making. And so this is where we might want to run some scenario analysis and say, well, if we actually decided, well, we were behind budget, we wanted to reach budget, let's increase our margins by 5% and see what that might um, do to our, to our profits. Obviously, there's going to be some change to demand if you do that, but this is just to show you the technique versus to show you uh, the absolute real world uh, scenario that you might have. Okay, and what's cool here is that we can now backwards integrate. Well, what would be our scenario sales based on this scenario gross revenue margin? So I'm just going to add another measure here. I'm going to go scenario sales, and I'm going to go total sales because we know what that is. That's not going to change, but it's going to, well, it is going to change. It's going to change by the scenario gross revenue margin that we have plus the total cost because the costs aren't going to change. And so if I bring that into my table now, we've got our scenario sales. <clears throat> so from a scenario sales, we can work out what's our scenario profits. And so I'm going to then create a new measure and go scenario profits and then go scenario sales minus total costs. And if I bring that into the, uh, the table, you see, okay, well now that's a scenario set, scenario profits. Lastly, I'm just gonna create, a, I'm actually gonna create the total profits because what we wanna see is that we wanna see well, what, what is the actual change in our total profits going to be. And so if I um, just very easily go total sales minus total costs here, Now I've got my total profits and versus the scenario profits. And so now what we can do is we can go figure out well, what is the change from, of uh, our scenario profits versus our total profit. So I'm gonna um, just go difference or uh, change in profits. And then I'm going, what I'm gonna do is put some pretty simple logic in here and I go scenario profits divided by total profits minus one and this is obviously going to be a percentage and then I can drag that into that canvas like so okay cool so now what we've got here is we are we can now get rid of some of these intermediary calculations and we can so obviously we can get rid of these ones we can get rid of the margin change uh, and we can get rid of scenario sales so now what we can do, we can we can go, okay, for a 10% change, if we increase our gross revenue margin by 10%, what change is that going to have to our profits? And you'll see here that it's a pretty significant change. If we can increase the margin of our, of our, our product sales, then we actually increase by 10%, then we can actually increase our profits by almost 27% across every single product. So that's some pretty cool analysis, right? But what also would be cool is if we were able to see, okay, from a from a total perspective, what is this total? What is this total for all of these changes? So we want to put it in, in some sort of visualization which enables us to do that. Okay, so this is how you do that. So first of all, we've got to create a table. Let's create a table of that margin adjustment. Now you'll recognize here that this table actually has one value, but that's because it is aligned to the selection here. So what we have to do is we need to actually edit the interactions and then go don't summarize, don't summarize here. And now we get actually every single iteration of that margin adjustment table that we created. And now what I'm gonna put against here is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get this change in profits. I'm gonna grab that change in profits and I'm gonna drag it into that table. 
And so now we can see, okay, well here is the total change in profits based on this margin adjustment. And we can try create a visualization out of this. And I quite like this visualization here, but again, we run into this slight problem. The problem here is that uh, because it's a number, because this is a number, it's not actually giving us, you know, I only really want to see five different uh, columns. Uh, but it looks like it's got, well, it's got five columns here, but it's got these big spaces, which, which we don't really want, which I don't want in this particular visual. So here's how you actually solve that. What you've got to do is that this is actually a number, right? And we've got to create a text value out of this. So I'm going to create a new column and I'm going to call it margin, just go adjustment for short. And what I'm going to do is go format the margin adjustment column into a percentage like that. And now you can see that this is actually t a text value. So you see this data type is text. And so what I can do is I can sub, I can sub this into the axes. And now, and all I gotta do is just sort it, re rearrange the sort. And so now we actually only see those five values. We've got none of those intermediary gaps. And so we've got minus 5%, plus 2%, 5% and so on and so forth. And we, what we could do is we could actually add the data labels here. And now we've got a pretty compelling visual which showcases well, what is gonna be the change in profits based on any margin adjustment that we make. We can look at it from a individual product perspective or we can just look at it from a portfolio perspective. So hopefully you can see it's a pretty cool technique uh, and it's very applicable into lots of different scenarios. I mean, this is just not, not the one way you can do it. Once you just nail down this technique of bringing in parameters and incorporating them in through measure branching in your logic, you can do some pretty awesome stuff around sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, etc. So we have gone through a, a heap in this, uh, in this example, but I wanted to do from start to finish um, you know, this, this type of analysis uh, this type of uh, logic in Power BI so you can see how it all fits together. Okay, good luck with it.